Well, guys, we are finding out who these low-life scumbags are within the Tory party. You know, the ones who plan to vote against the government's internal market bill. Now, Boris has had to do this because the EU plan to use the withdrawal agreement to hold the UK over a barrel via Northern Ireland, and Boris Johnson, it appears, is working to prevent it. I mean, let's be honest, it was likely always the EU's plan since Boris Johnson had both hands tied behind his back when he made that deal. Thanks to, of course, the Ramonin low-life parliament that we partially got rid of last year. Well, you might remember one of the strongest voices against that parliament and its treachery was then Attorney General Jeffrey Cox. But it seems this Pratt has clearly forgotten what he said last year and now plans to go against the government and Brexit because he wants the withdrawal agreement to stay as it is even if it affects Northern Ireland adversely and lets the EU take the piss out of us. I'm sure you will remember him saying this last year when Parliament tried to limit what the government could do in regards to Brexit and the Labour Party refused an election when offered for the first time in history. This Parliament is a dead Parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it away. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr. Speaker when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. Well, it seems he is just as cowardly and lily livered as they are, planning to betray the British people by opposing something that might actually be good for Britain. Now, the BBC picked up on this, which we will briefly go through. It headlines, Brexit, Geoffrey Cox says PM is damaging UK's reputation with Bill. Which, no, you coming out and saying this nonsense is damaging our reputation. It's amazing how it's all changed from being illegal at one point to no longer being that. We can obviously thank Gina Miller for that one. He accused Boris Johnson of doing unconscionable damage to Britain's international reputation. The internal market bill would go against the agreement signed by the UK and European Union earlier this year. Which is just fucking laughable when you consider how the EU have acted over the past couple of months and especially over the past couple of years. They haven't acted in good faith, so Boris Johnson is entirely within his right to go and do this. Something I must have said in videos a hundred times already. Justice Secretary Robert Buckland said the bill was an insurance policy. Mr Buckland told the BBC he hoped powers being sought by ministers would never be needed, and that he would resign if the UK ended up breaking international law in a way I find unacceptable. Because obviously it's perfectly fine to break international law if a trading partner is trying to take the piss and take advantage of you using these treaties. Because let's be honest, if you act in bad faith in relation to a treaty then you don't have to stick in it, so technically you wouldn't be breaking in any law by getting rid of it. It continues, Mr Cox backed Brexit and was the government's top legal advisor when the withdrawal agreement was drawn up, which puts him in the frame for letting the EU put things in there that allows this shit show to occur and forces the government to actually have to do this. Maybe he actually had some outside interests that wanted these things in there. I guess we will never really know. But it doesn't really matter. Hopefully this bill will go through and we can start getting rid of the withdrawal agreement. You all know, I hope Boris Johnson tears it up and throws it back at him. It continues though, Mr Cox was writing in the Times and said, There was no doubt the unpalatable implications of the withdrawal agreement were known when the PM signed it. You also knew that and should have said they were unpalatable, but you do also have to factor in what was going on at the time time. Boris Johnson was heavily under the cosh with a bunch of traitors all around him. The whole parliament was working against the people including the Speaker of Remain, John Burkuk. Because I guess when your wife's getting belt fed dick by your cousin you have to take it out on everyone else and when you get a little bit of power you let it go to your head and then you start acting like a bit of a dickhead in relation to what 17.4 million people voted for. And it would seem Jeffrey Cox the arsehole is joining this bunch of snivelling shit weasels. Because in my opinion he's now as bad as the if he votes against this bill. We, the British government and parliament, have given our word, our honour, our credibility, our self-respect and our future influence in the world all rest upon us keeping that word, Mr Cox wrote. Yes, they might do in normal times, but with the EU acting as they have done, there is good reason to actually get out, which he goes into a little bit further on. Though,
though he stops short of actually pointing out the fact that the EU are really taking the piss and instead says they are just claims. He said that there were lawful ways for the government to deal with its concerns such as using a procedure set out in the agreement to take temporary and proportional measures to protect the UK's interest if approved by the Commons. Which is exactly what this bill will do. If approved by the Commons, Parliament is sovereign, that is the end of it. Supreme Court said that last year and before that, so at the end of the day, Boris is well within his right and the law it seems to do what he wants in this regard, especially as it's protecting the continuity of the Union. The Internal Market Bill would give ministers the power to reduce the amount of paperwork that Northern Irish firms have to fill in on goods bound for Great Britain, such as export and exit declarations, or to remove the need for them entirely, which obviously they should be removed, but we will wait and see what happens with that. It would also allow the UK to modify or reinterpret state aid rule subsidies for firms in Northern Ireland in the event of the two sides not agreeing a future trade deal. Because obviously, if we don't agree a deal with the EU, then those areas are not under any control. At the moment, they are dealt with by Brussels. If we leave on a no-deal basis, this bill is definitely going to be needed. Which makes it even more hilarious that the left and every other fucker in the media has been screaming from the rooftops about this bullshit. Like I said at the time, it's just a storm in a teacup, but when you've got traitorous Tory MPs coming out and saying this shit, I have to make videos on it, we have to know who they are, and we have to remember. Hopefully, every single Tory MP who votes against this bill will have the whip removed and then recall petitions can be started. We cannot have the situation like we had last year where MPs are moving parties or getting kicked out of the party and keeping their seat. You get elected on a ticket, you stay on that ticket, or you get out of that seat and go for election as an independent, because I'll guarantee most people voted you in for the party, not for you. Now, old Jeffrey Cock and Balls has shown himself to be a traitorous fuck pig in my opinion. Not really surprising, considering he is a politician after all. There is no guarantee that he's actually going to vote against it, but it appears he might, or possibly he may well just abstain, which in my opinion is just as bad as voting against it. Obviously, hopefully I'm wrong and there are less Tory traitors than we thought, but I don't think I will be. I expect there will be a fair few of them. Will there be enough to stop this internal market bill? Who knows? Hopefully not. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>